Hello, welcome back. This is Coinpig. So what I thought what I'd do is I'd actually show you the coin this time. This is the Three Graces two ounce silver proof coin. Now, unfortunately, of course, it arrived late in the day. Now, I've decided I will show you the coin. So here it is, there's the raw mint box, and that's the, the coin that we're going to look at, the UK 2 ounce silver proof coin, the Three Graces. It's part of this uh, Great Engravers series. This is William Wyon, that's his signature. Let's open the box. Of course there is this. booklet with the um, information. Not going to really go through that. It's um, yes, it was a bit of a bit of a short <laughs> availability on these these coins. Um, I think the gold, both gold coins, sold out in about six minutes, or maybe even less. Um, I think the larger silver coin, five ounce, I think that sold out about seven minutes or so. I think this one was the only one left by the time I got in. Here it is. It comes with a certificate of course and here is the coin. That's the three graces. I think it's sort of representing the three parts of the UK at the time. The original Irish harp, the Scottish thistle, and the English whatever that is. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I still don't know really, looking at it. Um, yeah, apparently Wales didn't count in them days. And of course Ireland was Ireland. It wasn't Northern Ireland and the Republic. But these are the three graces. Now, I think the two ounce silver coins actually have a better, they feel better, they're heavier obviously, um, but they just feel about the right sort of weight. Let's just quick check, yeah, it does have a portrait of the Queen from JC. So it's just really a quick look at this particular coin. What I'll do is I'll show you some close up images and go through them bit by bit. Just to note that the edge is a plain edge. Well, plain ribbed edge. Well, apparently, when these were delivered, those who could afford and were fortunate to get the gold had them hand-delivered by three stunning-looking women dressed as three graces. I, on the other hand, got them delivered by a youngish gentleman that looked like he'd come out of a 1970s heavy rock band. So not quite the same thing. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, obviously. But yeah. I, for some reason, was probably last in the queue. I don't know why. Anyway, this is just looking at some of the images that I was able to get of the coin. And, uh, well, you can let me know what you think about this particular design, whether you like it or not. I mean, obviously, this was based on the original William Wyon dies from, the, from 1817. They were never put into circulation. Only 50 were ever produced, or thereabouts, that we know about. And um, yeah, I mean, they were almost lost. But obviously, William Wyon became very skilled. I mean, he was skilled. He, he won prizes at the, the art college he went to, and obviously got a job fairly early on with the Royal Mint in London, of course, at the time. 
at Tower Hill. So he did he did really well. Yet there was a redesign of coins about 1816. He joined in 1816, but the person who redesigned the coins in 1816 was none other than Benedetto Pistrucci. I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm not very good with pronunciations. He redesigned some coins in 1916 because there hadn't been a great deal. And there was some criticism, should we say, of the redesigns. And that was that was William Wyon's invite, if you like, into designing his own coins. Didn't necessarily work out in that instance with the three graces. But you know, people took note. People understood. He designed, in fact, the three graces by funding it himself he thought he could you know further his career essentially showing his skills and a few people yeah they thought he's a good he's a good person he's gonna go far other people got a bit jealous i think now of course there had been some particular events in the previous years of course in 1801 the act of union and we have a coin of course to commemorate that happened this is the three graces in greek mythology the three graces are the daughters of zeus and of course around about this sort of time there was a lot of nostalgia towards classic themes classical themes and so on and the elgin marbles had been whisked out of greece to britain so yeah there was some there was some inspiration should we say from events that had happened in and around that sort of time scale in the previous 10 or 20 years. Yeah, he was taking full advantage of these in this design. I think, to be fair, it was probably too soon for him to really make his mark um, in terms of the number of coins and so on going out because he had only just begun his career at the Royal Mint. He started in 1816 and this design was in 1817, so just a year after he actually started. Yeah, Wine also became very talented, obviously, but very he was very prolific in his output. He did produce a lot of work. This work was, I suppose, most noted for things like the Seated Britannia in the 1820s, the Lion Sixpences, the Shillings of George the Fourth. And of course, the Una and the Lion, our previous sample of his work, he produced in 1839. Of course, he did a lot more coins, medals, with portraits as Queen Victoria and so on. And this sort of led, initially at least, to a bit of a rivalry between Wyon and uh, Pistrucci. Wyon, I don't think, he hadn't really sort of moulded himself into the Royal Mint at that time. It was a bit early in his career, as I said, and I think the attention was taken away from him. Obviously, the talent was out, as they say, eventually, but it took a while. Um, so, William Wellesley Pole was master of the mint. Pole appeared to value the skills of Wyon's rival Pistrucci more highly. Okay, so yeah, basically they fell out. So eventually, Wyon of course, became chief engraver in 1828, just 12 years after he first joined the Royal Mint. And that, as I say, was that. Well, almost. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Don't forget that there are some more videos coming up. And don't forget to click on the links below for my previous videos. And if you haven't already seen those, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you like this sort of content. And um, let me know what you think of this particular coin and this whole series of the great engravers. So far, we've only seen one great engraver. That's uh, William Wyon, but I'm sure there will be others. And because this one was delayed, this one should have come out last last year. Um, I'm guessing we might actually see another one this year. So there might actually be two coming out this year. We'll see, shall we? Anyway, as I said, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Keep collecting.